I like double dry hopped IPAs. They're good. You don't look entirely disgusted. So. I'm not. Yeah. Well, tell them why you wouldn't um, feel that way. I don't really like IPAs really much, but this one's actually pretty good. It's I, actually good to have someone like that. It, it, it's yeah. it's very good actually. To, to even it out for the drink. people that don't like IPAs that much here, a voice of the people. I like the artwork. It's kind of like their uh, what was that like out of the grime? What was that one? Jump in the line. There we go. I knew it rhymed with something like that. <laughs> out of the grime. Yeah, it's like very zombie. Right. Yeah. I surprisingly really enjoy this beer. It's a lot yeah, of smoke coming off this thing. Yeah, so James, go ahead, talk about uh, what you got going on. Okay, here. yeah, so we have a pork shoulder, aka pork butt. Yeah. This you did not know, it's one and the same. Uh, we've been roasting for, shit, I don't know, what time? 130, so like six hours now. Six and a half hours. So in like two more hours, it should be done. It should be delicious. It's gonna be a delicious butt. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be sweet, sweet butt. Tom, do you like delicious butts? I do. Uh, just put some dry rub on it. It's got some mustard to help the uh, dry rub stick. Oh, and, right. So, uh, yeah, so I guess talk about your process a little bit. Yeah, so. Start from step one. Step one was uh, cut a little bit of the extra fat. No, 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 I like, went all the way back to like when you went to order for people who've I, never done it before. Okay, I said, can I get a pork shoulder with the bone in? I was like, or pork butt, because they're the same thing. You went to an Italian deli, Antonio's. Yeah, Antonio's Italian, Antonio's Italian deli. delicatessen. Yeah. Wonderful. We can put up a logo. Dink! Yeah. Check it out. If you're on Long Island, which you might be, check it out. And they got me uh, like a fresh pork shoulder the next day. I picked it up in the morning and I uh, went right to grill. I took it in the morning. I got up like 5 o'clock this morning, started prepping everything, assembled the grill and all the tin foil and stuff. Try and talk to there. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm loud enough. You'll yeah. be all right. <laughs> and I uh, put some mustard and then uh, dry rub. And the mustard doesn't really impart any flavor from what I've heard to the pork. It just, it's a bonder to make all of the rub stick. That's interesting. Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah, so I just missed you, my mouth. It's good, good, good. Your accuracy is, is up. Chef Richie did that in his, uh, his uh, pulled pork. He did mustard. Yeah. And then the thing. So that must be a thing. Well, I think, I think but mustard sometimes must mustard, go together yeah, for some reason. Because if you get a Cuban sandwich, mustard. You put mustard on it. Yeah. yeah. I think it's because anything fatty and like very rich, the mustard's like a tang, so that's a contrast. Rather than putting like mayo and uh, like fat on fat, yeah, you fat want, on like, fat, a zing yeah. on whatever. I, I could actually see that. I, I probably yeah, makes sense, right? More healthy for you as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not that we're going for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we decided to get a nine pound piece of pork because we're health conscious. Yeah, so it's a nine pound like mofo. Uh, it's huge. It used up the whole fucking tub of seasoning to cover this thing. Did it really? Yeah. What what seasoning did you? Uh, get so it was uh, three L spices. And that. I thought and it was, I was no, something. our, uh, yeah, I, I'll look it up now. But it was, yeah, the 5 spice, which is the all-purpose one. And how'd you find out about that spice? Um, well, that one I just saw from, like, reviews and shit of people that used it. I've seen, like, uh, a bunch of different, like, uh, barbecue really Instagram like pages and stuff like that. They all use. It's delicious. Um, it's very some good. spices. So I ordered some spices, and this is the first one we tried. Considering it's, like, supposed to be extra hoppy, it's, it's yeah. surprisingly... I'm, I'm letting mine get a nice smoky flavor to it. Well, I'm trying... I don't want to talk about things that I don't really know about, but I believe the dry hopping at the end adds more to the consistency of it than it does the overall, like, strong bitterness factor. More of a hop flavor? I don't really know. I mean, I, oh my god, that was bold. Just whipped your phone. I think we should probably look more into that. Especially if you want to talk about IPAs and it's going into the dry hopping process and why you would do it and which kind of hops you would use. I don't really know too, too much about it. So if anybody wants to link us to something that goes real into detail about that. But I think the best way is home brewing, everyone's been saying, really, to learn about that kind of stuff. So anyway, so it's, uh, it was code, no. code three spices. Yeah. And uh, the 5 0 rub, which is their all purpose. Um, it's some sort of proprietary blend of some delicious things. I tasted just the powder or rub, whatever you want to call it. It tastes delicious. Yeah, very paprika-y. Yeah, and uh, so we just used the Kingsford Blue charcoal to get all the heat, and then we have some uh, applewood chunks to get all the smoke that is currently smoking my face instead of the meat. Next time we should probably have a fan here to push the, the air that way. Yeah, maybe. I think that would work. Well, the effects are great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Tom very looks ominous. Like, someone looks like he's emerging from some kind of layer. <laughs> it's a pretty good evil laugh. I yeah. know, right? Yeah. That worked in that a long time. Yeah. So we just picked this up from Barrow yesterday. We went directly to the source, and I've never been to Tap and Barrel. I mean, we lived on Long we live on Long Island, but we we're on Nassau County. So I'll put up a little map. We're on the side close to the city, so we don't really go that far out. We're on the five one six side. Yeah, yeah. So it's five one six six three one. We're on the five one six side. Let's see. Sorry to everyone. I'm on my phone, but I'm actually checking the internal temperature of the meat. 
from the app on my phone. I just want to make sure everything is okay. Flexing, just yeah, that. yeah. Well, if they see me on my phone, I yeah. seem distracted and uninterested. Well, it's what you call it. This is more of a. Just want to let them know. Yeah, this is more of a free form type of jam. This isn't. And as in case spray. you wondered if we were basting the meat with anything, we are. Oh, we are. Yeah, I actually have a spray bottle full of apple juice. So once an hour, we spray it down with apple juice. Why apple juice? And so it uh, keeps it moist first of all, and the um, sugars that's in the apple juice help to caramelize and make more of like a bark. Interesting. Could you have used a different? Fruit juice? Do people do that? You could have, but apple and pork goes together. Yeah. People use apple cider vinegar also. I think like a mix and order I combo. Think, uh, yeah. uh, a pineapple would also be a very good. It could, uh, but juice we're doing more of just a regular because it's like a regular barbecue rub. If we were doing like Hawaiian spices and stuff, then yeah. I would go. We would try pineapple juice, like we did for the whole pork. Right. Yeah. So I could I could throw up some pictures, but describe what we did last time we built the little grill. Well, so yeah, we had. Well, it wasn't little. You know what? Sorry. It was expanded. I think what the best thing to do is just say from the beginning when there was no grill. We didn't buy this. Kind of talk through the process of people want to recreate what we've done here, how we did it, where we got the stuff. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to want to recreate our grill. Well, well maybe. They, they I mean, they may. They yeah. may want. I mean, it's a good grill. It works great. Yeah. Yeah, that pork was... Do you still have pork left from the first one? Yeah, yeah but I'm, I'm not going to eat yeah, it for like probably, two weeks. That's probably bad now at this point. All right, so I, I'll describe basically what happened was we wanted to cook a whole pig, but we didn't yeah. have a big enough grill, and we weren't going to rent one. So we went to Home Depot, we got cinder blocks, and we found these sweet ass grates to cook on yep. finally. Because the first time I cooked a whole pig, I used an old ladder and I covered it with aluminum foil because we couldn't find a grate. Yep. All the grates were super expensive. But this time we have actual grates you're supposed to grill on. Yeah, there were 24 like, by 24 sections of like grating you can use, like it's for grilling. Yeah. So it was really convenient. We yeah. Got it from Home Depot. So like two weeks ago we did a whole pig and obviously the pit was a lot bigger. But now we condensed it down and you're on some kind of barbecue journey. Yeah. To cook all different foods. Yeah, why not? Well, you yeah. know, barbecue and beer. They go together like yeah. uh, ham and eggs or something. I drank beer BQ. That's yeah, what I drank beer BQ. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I like that name. So, like, what's the... A, what's the next step? What are you going to do next? So, the next thing, I think we're going to try and do a brisket or ribs. Okay. Uh, if anyone leaves, you know, recommendation or recipe or something, we're willing to try. If not, we're just going to try. I ordered some more spices. So I'm going to run through them all. Yeah. And I got... Uh, I ordered some sauces, too, for us to try. What's and, like, uh, is this smoking or grilling or smoke grilling? Because I saw someone commented on the Instagram and they're like, because they're like, I have to use my oven. Are you like smoke grilling it? Yeah, where it's, like, it's getting smoked those... from the wood and it's yeah. getting grilled from the charcoal on the So that's the like a grill. term. There's like smoking, grilling, and smoke grilling? Yeah, because, yeah, you we could just I be, mean, you could just technically could be just smoking, smoking it. Yeah. Because let's, because like um, a bris, uh, uh, a corned beef gets like brined and then it gets... Uh, what just like smoked or something like that? So I believe so. I have no idea. But I know, I know. Also, when you it, smoke I think it gets food, like, it gets brined and then boiled and then just smoked, and that's how it gets cooked. It doesn't I, get grilled at all. But I, I know when you smoke a food, you want to look for a good smoke ring around. Yeah, so the we'll meat. see how this smoke that ring pink comes ring, out. right? The yeah. pink ring, yes. That, that we haven't had consistent smoke this whole time because it, it's not a fully encapsulated thing. So. No, I mean. If we had a, a genuine smoker, I mean, I also think it might take a little longer to cook if you're just smoking it. Does it? I have no idea. I, yeah, I, I guess I mean, it makes I would sense. think if you're just smoking something, it would probably take a lot longer of a time. But the yeah, smoke because is hot. The, yeah, it's hot, but it's not going to be as hot as like direct coals. I guess that makes sense. The because the smoke is coming from the wood; it's not coming from the charcoal, and the charcoal is the one that's supposed to be, supposed to be getting all the heat. From. When they cook things in like a smoker, at, like like a dyno. Yeah. They have these like big metal boxes, and they're just like filled with smoke for like 20 hours. Yeah. So something like that, they're cooking at like 175 for like 20 hours. Yeah. We're looking to do like 250, 300 for like six, seven, eight, nine hours. Is it always that. necessarily the longer you cook it and the lower you cook it, the better? Or there's is there like a level like if you're cooking I mean, there's like, probably like diminishing returns. Well, like, I guess it has to be higher than the temperature you want to get it to, according well, to physics. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thermodynamics. Yeah. So you'd have to cook it, if you want to get your pork to 205, you'd have to cook it at at least 205. It'll never get to 205, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. of the energy dissipation. So, yeah. Science. I mean, I don't know much about science, but I do know good barbecue. Yeah, the, there pig, we go. the last pig that we cooked was pretty it was, amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was delicious. That yeah, secret bacon part, the, the, the belly, I guess we were I, eating. Uh, whatever part that was, it was yeah, the most this, delicious like amazing part of the pig. Part. I've After ever it was had. all chopped up and carved into pieces, we found this one section that was just, I it, think it, it was the pork belly. It may have been the pork belly, but it was just as good, or if not better, than bacon. But it couldn't, yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe on the sides, because the pork belly, right? Isn't that the. That's where like you the, make the bacon. That's the inside. Like, our, our pig was cut, there was no insides. So it's just like flaps on the stomach part on the sides. And I like, think we're done here. What is it? Is it 10 and a half or 12 and a half? We're at 11 12. minutes anyway. <laughs> This beer is pretty fucking good. It's good, right? I, 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 I See, do like There's it. a lot of beers that taste...
Yeah, I'm gonna